Alex Merklinger's Mysteries of the Mind. And now your host, Alex Merklinger. Welcome to our show, my friends. This young man, Cliff. Cliff, I'm going to change your name, okay? I'm going to call it... I'm going to just refer to you as Cliff Bott. How's that? <laughs> okay, that's, that's fine. That's I've good. been called a lot worse. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, uh, and uh, only because, you know, because a lot of people say, well, how come Cliff doesn't want, uh, you know, doesn't want us to know what his last name is? Well, I'm well, going to say... Well, I can be tell real me. honest about that in any, any number of levels. I yeah. don't want to buy into this cult of personality. I don't want the aggravation of people annoying me. I've got a lot of work to do. And you didn't want to, uh, as as you told me, you didn't want to attract a lot of attention and blah, 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 which I respect and, and I do understand. However, the work you're doing is, we went through this the last time you were on, and, and i got to be honest with you, Cliff, it is still so far beyond me and my understanding that... I have to f- totally focus on what you say. I understand what you say. But however you got it is some of the most incredible stuff I've ever heard of in my life. Well, it's been a long progression. I mean, this did not come about um, instantly. I've been doing uh, computer work. Uh, I think like my first job was writing uh, help files and uh, executables for Microsoft for their version of C 4.5 in the 80s. Huh. So I've um, been with it a long time, and it's grown over time. And it's been a gradual uh, awakening and the insight as to how language works, and uh, especially how the changes seem to precede changes in human behavior. In human behavior, is that in literal behavior, meaning action? Correct. Or, or, okay, or I was going to say state of mind, state Well, of it all goes to that. You can't separate it. Uh, many humans, uh, in fact, a human cannot make an action without altering their state of mind. Correct? Yeah, that's true. So that's true. Uh, any kind of alterations, any kind of changes uh, that cause ripples in how language is used could be picked up. Okay. In, in putting these, these programs together, where... Where does the idea start? I mean, how did you ever come across the the concept of the web bot runs? Because it's it, it's so fantastic to me. I mean, it it just reminds me of of, of truly uh, divine revelation almost. <laughs> okay, let's uh, we'll have to back up a bit. Uh, I don't know that that's really a factor in it so much. Let's go to the more prosaic actual uh, derivation of how it happened, right? Okay. Uh, at one point, Microsoft had this big project for a product they called SMS. I forget what the uh, a- acronym actually stood for, but it was like System Management Services or something. And basically, the idea was that you'd have a master server somewhere you could plop on your network, and it would run around on the network while people weren't busy, and it would constantly figure out what needed to be updated where in the software and do it all automatically behind the background. Plus, yeah. the real benefit was to theoretically do a complete inventory of the entire system. And at that time, we're talking about very complex PCs that had all these different kinds of cards and stuff in them, and it was going to automatically survey the PC and dump all this stuff in a database. Well, as may be expected, when they ran this thing initially, they had what um, we in the industry would call an operational failure. It worked. It'd go out in the network and just scope out like mad, come back and put it into the database. Problem was, any time you asked the database a question, it would take about three and a half or four days before it finally started spitting something out to you. Yeah, yeah. So that was my first experience with the idea of, of how you effectively go out and look at uh, things on the uh, on networks. They had hired me to come on up and maybe tweak some stuff for them, and in the process, I got a few really good ideas. And one of them was, why bother to store information about each and every one of the computers and cards and everything multiple times? Because basically, we were just populating our database over and over and over again with mm-hmm. essentially the same information. Yeah. So I said, why don't we just store information about the language we're using to describe this? So so we store the, the word, you know, AudioVox 386 card, blah, 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 once. And then every time we want to repeat that, we say, aha, here's another instance of that, and we make this little connection between integers. 
Now, it made the, what it did was it shifted the complexity from a system that had, at the time I was brought in, uh, they had a version operating that had 400 plus tables in a SQL Server database. And what I did was to, what I thought of as flopping the database and converted it over to seven tables. They were massively deep, but they were very heavily indexed. And they were all essentially integer to integer relationships. Mm. And so it made the searches very fast, and it would start spitting out the data within seconds. I think our first hit was like 20 seconds later, wow. uh, as opposed to three plus days. The issue is, of course, it would still take 12 days to spit out all the data that you'd accumulated on a particular network if it was very large. Mm -hmm. But at least you didn't have to wait the three days for it to start. It's, you Does that make sense? Well, yes, but it's still, I understand what you're saying. And I, I never thought I was stupid. But um, I remember years ago when, when computers really just started to, to come into their own, you know, for the general public. And, um, and I bought a computer, a laptop, and I forget who made it. And I bought it and I took it home. And do you know that I never even knew how to turn it on? Nobody told me what to do. No, nobody even explained where the computer was. I finally gave it away. Uh, but I, I never knew how to turn it on. That's, that's how backwards. So then I had a friend of mine that used to write programs. And he was... Um, Matter of fact, he was a state trooper from uh, from Arkansas, and he was trying to explain. He said, "You know about computers." We talked about, it, and I said, "I said I, I can't get into computers until I can understand the concept." I understand exactly. Yeah, because it, you know, I had to know that before I could allow myself to start to really get interested in it. He, and so it, you went on out and read The Heart of the Machine and uh, that kind of thing. Well, no, he he tried to explain it to me. Oh, okay. You know, and and uh, and I think I had a fairly good understanding. So when you say, does you know, do you understand? Well, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but <laughs> I guess, but it's still clear as mud, right? Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> I, I get you. Yeah, Cliff, it's 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 just it's phenomenal to me on many different levels. Number one, the knowledge that you have. Of of this of this science, and it is a science, isn't it? Uh, a nascent one, I would agree with you. Yes. And and then to take it a step further from just being a science is to begin to understand how the subconscious mind of human beings, plural, work, and how you are able to literally, with the program that you designed begin to tap into knowledge that is within the subconscious mind of people. But we do it badly. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, let's not get all whipped up here because look how far off we were on some of the stuff on Cindy Sheehan. Huh? Okay, true, you know, back in April in Alta yeah. 405, we posted that uh, a woman, a female aspect would arise yeah. during a period of an oil... Um, uh, crisis or, or brouhaha and she would wear the aspect of grief and so on and we got a few more of the details right and we knew for instance that there would be a supplication and an asking for an audience involved right, right. Yeah. but we really we really blew it because my interpretation was well okay background of an oil crisis a lot of this was coming from our oil entity and uh, there were cross links back over to the populous entity US of A subsection but the way I read it was, okay, the woman and the, um, and the, and the grief aspect were, were separate from the supplication of the official, and that it was actually going to be an official attempting to get some kind of an audience relative to oil. So you see, we got it all, it was like a big stew, and we picked it out wrong. Make but, sense? Well, yes, it does, but the information was there, it was your interpretation that was wrong. Go oh, quite correct. See, yeah. So, so there. I mean, that's that's my point. My gosh, yes, maybe your interpretation was a little off because you were you were ninety percent right on, and it's not over. Uh, with, I remember. wouldn't go that high. Uh, you got we got to be a lot harsher on ourselves here if we're going to have any kind of intellectual honesty and be able to go to sleep at night. Well, right? Okay. Okay. We got we got the words right. I mean, we got female. We got grief. We got supplication. We yep. got official audience, etc. But if I'd just been, you know, smart enough and to leave that as well enough alone and shove it out there, but these reports would be quite boring if not placed in the context. <laughs> and that's where I started screwing up. 
right? Yeah, because I started saying, well, you know, logically, oil crisis, official, etc. Yeah, but Cliff, it's not over yet. She's coming back. Well, I know there's another issue there as well that's rather right. um, um, not distressing, but I find uh, uh, distasteful because I hate doing these kinds of things on individuals. Yeah, yeah. We had this um, uh, situation where, uh, like I say, back in April we got that. This was just in a regular old, um, uh, what we call a serendipitous run, where we start off with a few seed uh, websites, maybe a hundred thousand or so, and then tell it, you know, follow it down two hundred fifty-six layers and get back to me. And if uh, we still have more time and bandwidth, we'll send you off again. And um, then we just let things rise after it goes through those initial hundred thousand seed sites. And um, we had a had this stuff arise about a character that would. Ar- would happen on the center stage here, mm-hmm. but shortly thereafter, due to an entirely different set of thinking about things, we went to the um, CFR, the Council for Foreign Relations, right. and I did what's known as an extract. I ran some, some programs against their publicly published uh, data, yeah. and one of the things I found was that hmm, uh, they have this kind of weird view of themselves in terms of a lot of the language they <laughs> use in self-referential um, uh, uh, sorts of discussions and I was able to model an entity that we called the powers that be okay. and when we ran that next which I think was in Alta 605 which would have been probably June uh, we came up with uh, this new data and we modeled it out as a woman of dark aspect right. blind in both eyes lame in both uh, legs who had a dread companion now, the way that dread arose, it came in in such a way that I took it to mean a dreadlocked companion. Right. Uh, we then go on to find out that this individual is blooded with this woman, and that the blooded aspect is uh, surrounded or, or couched in evil. Uh, I never, ever maintained that that relationship was evil. I always saw it, said that it, you know it's surrounded by it, it is involved in it and that there was this level of protection being provided by this dread companion. And to be quite honest, the powers that be are extremely scared of this dread companion, like shaking in their boots kind of thing. That's the information we get from our data. Well, that doesn't fit Cindy Sheehan. But it does in a weird kind of way if you look at it from the powers that be viewpoint. And, And I don't want to be a person who trades on another individual's grief. So we won't go there. But just imagine that I'd gotten this wrong again. That the woman with dark aspect is Cindy Sheehan, laboring under the dark aspect. That her dread companion, providing protection, is the moral authority given to her by her dead child, who was killed in an evil war. And that beyond that, maybe now that we know, especially now, and I Mm. hate to bring it up this way, you know, we hear reports that she's going back to your mother. Yeah, right. Who's just had a stroke. Strokes frequently produce blindness and par- paralysis. That's true. So maybe I got that aspect of it wrong as well. Um, whew, I didn't even think of that aspect with, with her mom, yeah. And yet, on the other hand, it may not even be Sheehan. Correct. It may be something that is... Well, let me hear you say something also coincidental. Yeah. As George Ure has on his site, I believe, of a couple of days back, uh, I forget my dates, I'll have to go and check, but a couple of days before it happened, we came up with this uh, short-term immediacy value in the last posting, which would have been, I think, part five, that the uh, woman with dark aspect uh, should watch out that there was going to be a traffic accident or a um, mm. crash kind of a thing, and that blah, 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 a bunch of words about an accident, and involved in this whole thing would be the uh, pictures being taken showing the a plot where props and supports would have been knocked down or laid out. And, of course, uh, we know that a guy with a truck went through and knocked down right. all of the, the crosses. Yeah, right. Hmm. Yeah, because, like, and I didn't even think of that, I, you always think of something grander, something right. on, on a much larger scale than some screwball knocking down a bunch of uh, crosses that they just put up. But it does meet the criteria, doesn't it? It does.